This is Greg from GoAutoWorks, and what I'm going to do in today's entry is show you how to properly set up your oil feed for your turbo application. Uh, this is a question I get asked a lot. So what I'm going to do is give you a walkthrough of what's included in our oil feed kits and give you the two basic ways to set up an oil feed to your turbo using a Honda motor as an example since that's what we mostly do. But the setup is basically the same on whatever motor you're going to use. So I'll do a quick walkthrough on what's included and the um, oil setups on each of these turbos behind me. Okay, in each oil feed kit you receive, it'll be prepackaged like this. It'll have the Dash 3 oil feed line, the adapter, your oil fitting, your oil T, and a second oil fitting with a second adapter. So outside of the pack, you'll have your 1/8 BSPT to 1/8 NPT male to female adapter. That's your T. And that's your 1/8 to Dash 3 oil fitting. These three pieces go together at the back of the block. Your second 1 8 to dash 3 fitting goes at the turbo and you also get this fitting which is a quarter inch to 1 8 um, reducer which a lot of times at this point doesn't get used quite as much because most turbos have gone away from having the quarter inch oil inlet unless you have like a Borg Warner or Bullseye Power or maybe an old Garrett journal bearing you won't use this fitting but we include it anyway. So let me show you. At the back of the block, this is probably the most important fitting. It's an aluminum 1 8 BSPT to 1 8 NPT. Your block is going to be BSPT fitting, uh, which is very close to NPT, but they're different. Plus, this is aluminum. You want to thread this into your aluminum block to help keep uh, any problems happening back there. Some other kits may send you a T that is 1 8 NPT to 1 8 NPT to screw in. Well, the problem there is your block isn't NPT, so you don't want to screw that in because you're going to force it into a wrong fitting. Even though it looks like it goes in, it, it, it doesn't really go in. So you want to use your BSPT, BSPT to NPT adapter and then screw your T fitting in to the back of that. To the side of that, you put your turbo feet. And then to the back port here, you will put your um, factory oil pressure sending unit back in this spot. So I'll go over in a second and show you this on the back of a block. Okay, what I have here is a single cam D16 Z6 block. It's pretty typical. Um, all the Honda blocks are gonna basically be the same. What's gonna be different is the location of your factory oil pressure sending unit port. On a single cam, it's right above the filter. Uh, B series, it's usually right to the um, left side of the filter. And on some H series, it's right below the filter. But this is a BSPT port. And your fitting is gonna go right in there. And then your T fitting, like I just explained a minute ago, is gonna go right here. And you can angle this to where the oil feed is gonna run across the timing belt side of the motor or the transmission side. You can tighten it and angle it to where it needs to be and put your factory oil pressure sending unit back in this port. Now the second option that we do, which is a really an ideal option for a lot of applications, is we use this oil sandwich plate from Golden Eagle. This particular plate feeds filtered oil to your turbo. It's one of the only plates on the market that I know of that actually feeds filtered oil, which it will go, it threads on right in between your oil filter and your block. Use the same 1 8 NPT port or fitting on the side port of, um, of the sandwich plate and it feeds the same way. You can run it either way, whichever works best for you. But again, this one actually feeds filtered oil to your turbo to help keep your turbo safer by not picking up any debris inside the turbo. Okay, back to the turbo side of things. I brought out three turbos that we do a lot of and I had all three in stock so it made it easier for me to show you. Uh, this is a Turbonetics dual ball bearing TNX 4060. This is a Garrett dual ball bearing um, GTX 3076. And this is a precision journal bearing uh, 57, uh, 5757. All of these can use the same Dash 3 oil feet line, but what's different on them is going to be the oil entry. The precision unit 
just like I said a minute ago, is going to use the 1 8 to dash 3 fitting that comes in the kit. It's going to screw right into the cartridge. Now, on some applications where you're using an oil restrictor, depending on your oil pressure and a few other things, the oil restrictor, which this is a journal bearing restrictor we use, 65 thousandths, will screw into the, to the CHRA. And then your oil fitting will screw in like that. We also have some one-piece um, restrictors with jets made by Vibrant that will cut down on the height here and it can be used the same way. The Garrett units use a different oil feed, which if you order our ball bearing oil feed kit, comes with the correct feed. That feed fitting has a built-in restrictor. It's not 1 8th, I believe it's 7 16th. And um, it screws in just like this. I brought this one out. This is a dash four oil restrictor. You can see how small the hole is for the oil feed side. But it screws in the same way. You just can't use a 1 8th NPT fitting here because the fitting size is different. The TurboNex unit, these come, a lot of people ask if this is an oil restrictor. That's not an oil restrictor. What TurboNex does is they pre-install an oil filter into their cartridge, but it's also 1 8 So you just screw the 1 8 fitting in the same way as you would, you know, any other turbo. The turbo is heavy and I couldn't get it in there. It's all good. So they all basically work out the same. All of our oil feed lines, we send them to you with a 90 degree fitting on one end and a straight on the other. This particular one has the black fittings because I'm doing it for a specific application where I'm matching up all the lines. I could do them all black, steel braided and black, all steel braided and stainless, whichever kind of um, orientation you want. But in most cases, you'll put the 90 degree in at the turbo and run the straight end to the back of the block from the oil feed. That's basically it. Um, hopefully I got that sorted for you. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, any concerns, leave them in the comments. Um, I talk fast. I'll try to slow that down next time. It's super cold out here and it's only like seven o'clock in the morning. So the coffee hadn't kicked in yet. But just another walkthrough. BSPT to NPT adapter, very important. Put this at the block. Um, any kit that you buy, if you bought somewhere else, if they're sending you a, you know, a NPT to NPT fitting to go into the back of the block, don't use it. You'll end up regretting it. You can crack the back of the block. You can break off the oil fitting and have to do a major repair for something that could have been done correctly so easily the first time. And we, I make sure you always get the right fittings when you order a kit from us, whether it be a ball bearing kit or journal bearing kit. You know, if you order one of our complete turbo kits, you get the oil feed and the drain, which I could have done the drain walkthrough. If you want to see that, let me know. Um, and I can do it separately. Um, again, Golden Eagle sent us this for our Civic build. These are great pieces. Um, they're the only oil sandwich plate that I know of that feeds pre-filtered oil to the turbo. And that's always a plus because oil contamination is a quick killer of a turbocharger. Um, it doesn't take very much to get into the oil line and destroy a turbo. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. So until next time, let me know if you want to see something else and I'll try to address it. Thanks. Real quick, I realize I left this out. Uh, a question I get a lot is Teflon paste or Teflon tape. You can use either one. Uh, I like to use Teflon paste because it's easier and it comes in a tube and one tube will last you forever and it's less messy. But most important, only use the paste or tape on the straight cut side of the fitting. The flared A inside doesn't get anything. This side seals on its own uh, inside the fitting. The straight cut side, you can tape it or paste it and use the paste or tape of your choice. So paste this side, nothing on that side. I like to use this. You can use whichever you want, but just don't put anything on the flared side of the fitting. If you do, it helps promote leaking. If you don't and it seals correctly, then it'll never leak.